good day and welcome to another video with Better Picks. Hope this finds everyone well. Just wanted to create a quick video today talking about some features in Adobe Camera Raw, uh, which are the texture, clarity, and dehaze. Now, interesting uh, features that um, are on offer with Adobe Camera Raw, obviously being able to apply them to raw images. And the fundamental purpose is really just to give your images a little bit more sharpness and punch. Uh, and while the sharpness uh, or sharpening tool is obviously still an option that I recommend, obviously depending on the output of the file, um, uh, and its intended use, its size, is it going to web or is it full resolution, there's a whole bunch of factors there to consider. Uh, the uh, texture clarity and dehaze options are good options to look at and consider uh, as part of your toolkit for improving and editing your images. So I've just got some images here that I photographed in Europe uh, a little bit over a year ago. Uh, second one there, obviously uh, quite hazy, uh, and uh, third one there, which is uh, not really hazy at all, but uh, would just be a good example of a different image to demonstrate uh, how these tools uh, work, basically. So for these tools, uh, I would always recommend not only viewing the image in its entirety, but taking the same approach that you should always take when you're uh, applying sharpening to an image, and that's looking at the image at 100%. And the reason that is, is because the resolution of your image is often far higher than the resolution of the screen that you're looking on. So if you increase or zoom in uh, the view of your particular image to 100%, which you can do just down the bottom here, if you click on that little drop down box, you can see there's an option there for 100%. And what that means is, is that you're now looking at the image pixel by pixel. So you're seeing every single pixel. Whereas when you're looking at the image as uh, a full screen or a full image. Um, this image, for example, is 6,000 pixels on the longest edge, but it's only 3,840 pixels uh, for the entire screen. So that means when you're looking at the entire image, it's not showing you every pixel because there's more pixels in the image than there is in the screen. So moving that zoom in to 100% means that um, you're, uh, you're looking at every pixel and you're going to see a true representation of what the adjustment is going to uh, have as an effect on the image. Now normally for adjustments, if you're changing exposure, contrast, highlights, that sort of thing, it's probably ne less necessary to uh, look at the image at 100%. But I think whenever you're affecting um, uh, this sort of effect on the image, so for the, in this example, the texture clarity and dehaze, it's worth just looking at the image at 100% because that's going to give you a better understanding of what results you're getting. So my recommendation when you're experimenting with any of these adjustments is to consider looking at um, uh, each of those adjustments separately and take them to extremes. For example, on this image, I'm going to take the texture to 100. And we can see that that's had a very clear immediate effect on the image. Now, the effect that each of these options have is quite different to each other, obviously. Otherwise, if they all did the same thing, there wouldn't be three different options. Uh, however, Taking it to extremes up to 100 means that you can really start to break down exactly what effect it's going to have. You can see there's a massive effect there with the clarity. Um, what effect it's going to have and if that's going to help you achieve the desired outcome that you want with your images or if it's not. There's no right or wrong. It really just comes down to what effect and what result you want to achieve. So if we look at texture, for example, we've gone up to 100. Let's go to negative 100 and see what happens there. Now, I wouldn't normally uh, look at going negative 100 on texture, but just looking at that as it is, it's, it's almost a dreamy kind of effect. Um, so quite interesting. Taking back up to zero. And clarity. Very interesting as well. So you can see uh, it's it's dropped a little bit of the highlights there. You can see on the whites around the building, it's uh, it's made it a little bit sort of 
almost muddy looking when you're trying to do highlight recovery uh, and you've lost all your highlights you often get very similar results and dehaze very interesting so quite an increase of contrast there it's darkened the image in some ways you can see the effect on the histogram up on the top right hand side there it's definitely having a darken effect and if I dehaze into a negative 100 it's brightening the image so you can see there's now no blacks in the image at all there's yeah quite an interesting effect really it's brightening up the image and it's pushing the exposure particularly in the darker areas of the image to the right in the histogram which is very interesting so the texture I think is probably a feature that I would use on an image like this you can see the effect that it's having particularly with that texture on the wall I think there's some potential there that it, it could look quite good um, clarity is a little bit interesting Clarity for this particular image, now I've used Clarity on uh, on a number of images and I've really enjoyed the results, however on this image I'm not sure it's really working for the result that I would be looking for. Uh, dehaze, I'm not going to use Dehaze in this image because there's not really a haze there, so the Dehaze I believe is uh, really designed to be used, for example if you've got a cityscape or, or some sort of view and there's a hazy sort of smog or fog. Uh, that's happening in the image that just helps to remove that haze just a little bit now this would be a perfect example um, so again we're just going to try texture okay see texture on that I, I don't think that really works it's creating quite a halo effect around the edges of, of many parts of the image again that dreamy sort of feeling uh, it's quite interesting if we go to the clarity clarity is quite interesting I mean that that could probably work Again, negative clarity, it's giving quite a dreamy, sort of almost like the lens has been smudged with something. Um, let's just go back to zero there. I'm interested to see what the dehaze will have as an effect. Uh, let's just have a look at that. Very interesting. So you can see uh, when I increase the dehaze, we'll go extreme up to 100. Again, it's darkening the image and that's probably too much of an effect, but it'll at least give you an idea of what it looks like. The dehaze is really quite effective at removing that hazy sort of feel. Now, creatively, it's really up to you whether or not you want to remove that haze because ultimately that may be a part of what helps tell the story with your image. It's not a feature that used to exist within Adobe Camera Raw or Lightroom, but it's certainly, uh, it certainly helps to uh, remove that haze that is really obvious. Now for this particular image, looking at it creatively, I actually enjoy the haze. I think it adds to the, the feel and the mood of the image. There's certainly some other adjustments that I would make, maybe increase the color temperature just a little bit, uh, increase contrast a little bit, uh, maybe drop the exposure just a tiny bit, and maybe a little bit of clarity, but we've still got that beautiful ethereal sort of feel. Uh, to the image which I really like. Now this next image is a is a great example of really strong haze and and being somewhat black lit by the sun uh, is just adding to it. You can see there's there's detail of trees in the foreground and there's very slight detail in the background there of, of the trees and the landscape and uh, I actually like the effect that it's had on this image. I mean it's it's why I photographed it in the first place but certainly that effect is not something that I would actively approach this image to try and remove. Um, I think it should stay there for sure. However, let's just have a look at what effect it has. Now, look at that. I think the dehaze is having a wonderful effect because it's actually showing all this detail in the background that I couldn't actually see before. Just amazing. Now, there's quite a bit of... Uh, noise there which we could deal with in uh, in a separate way which you know you've seen me uh, work with noise in previous videos but isn't that amazing the effect that that dehaze has had let's just go back to zero on that one now I don't know what you're seeing I mean there's very very slight detail in the background there but I wouldn't say that it's obvious in any way but if I put that up to say plus 50 so halfway to full effect plus 51 you know where I'm trying to go uh, all of a sudden all of this detail in the background appears and doesn't it look amazing let's go up to plus 75 so roughly three quarters of the way there that looks amazing I actually really like that image and I think it just 
it's interesting and it works. You've still got this ethereal feel. You've still got this smoke and fog and early morning sort of uh, weather that's happening that creates this very ethereal, interesting feel to the image. But I certainly wouldn't change it at all. Um, yeah, I think that's an amazing effect and I'm glad that I chose this image to look at this as an effect because that has really surprised me as you can probably tell and I think that uh, that just helps that image to really look amazing. As I said I would definitely consider uh, some noise reduction there because there is uh, some noise there um, but doesn't that look fantastic quite amazing indeed let's just have a look at a before and after comparison I think that says it all I think this is one situation where when you're trying with an image to have a very moody kind of landscape and feel, especially compared to traditionally what would be considered as a, a great landscape photograph, for me this has really worked. Now I actually love both versions. I think the version on the left with appropriate editing of course could work really well. Um, keeping in mind that the original version, obviously, it's completely unedited, there, and the, the the version that I presented for uh, as a print to purchase is is very different to that. But certainly, the version on the right has has made me think. Well, actually, the dehaze is a tool that I'm going to use in my toolkit. What an amazing effect! And as always, any of these tools, any edits that you make to images, it needs to be in a responsive manner. There's not a single silver bullet uh, approach to editing. It really does need to be on an individual basis depending on the image and obviously depending on the results that you're trying to achieve. And this has been a perfect example. Between those top two images, completely different approach, very different results, but amazing to see that some slight adjustments in different directions can give you some incredible results. So texture clarity and dehaze are fantastic tools to keep in mind to help give your images a little bit more punch, to help perhaps remove some of the haze or fog that you would see early morning uh, in some areas of the world, be it city or landscapes. This was a re remote rural area in a small village in Italy. So certainly a long way from a city, but uh, you know, applicable all the same, even though it's not a city. So, some thoughts there on texture clarity and dehaze, some definitely great results. And depending on what results you're looking for, as I always say with your images, season to taste. Make the changes that help you achieve the outcome that you're hoping to achieve with your images. So, hope this video has been helpful. And as always, questions in the comments are welcome. And we look forward to seeing you next time. Take care, everyone.